let's learn how to make this simple autonomous obstacle avoiding vehicle using an ultrasound sensor arduino and a motor driver board we will use tinkercad for programming to make this obstacle avoiding car you will need an arduino you will need a chassis with two geared motors uh, even if you don't have a proper chassis you can take a a piece of cardboard and uh, you know glue your geared motors onto that cardboard and some wheel to balance the car let me tell you a little about this motor driver board so motor driver boards can come uh, in various forms because different companies make it uh, in in a different way but the function they serve is is the same they basically control the voltage and the current that is being supplied so because we are driving two uh, geared motors which are 9 volts we don't want to connect them directly to the arduino because they will draw too much current so we are using this motor driver board in motor driver boards you have two inputs to connect the motor and you have a power supply on my board it is from 2.5 volt to 9.5 volt but you should check the specifications of your board and then you have these pins which you connect to the arduino so, and these pins are two to connect uh, one motor two to connect one motor and one is a voltage pin and one is a ground pin so this is the input voltage to the board and this is the output voltage that you can give to the arduino so i'm going to connect my motor driver board to the uh, to these two motors and i'm also going to attach the power supply so the power supply will go here and the motors will go one to this uh, two black pins and one to these two black pins and now i'm going to connect these pins to the arduino so we have two pins here for one motor and two pins here for the second motor and now i'm going to connect these pins to pin number 6 7 8 and 9 and then i'm going to connect the ground pin and the vcc pin from the motor driver board to the arduino so we are done with our wiring let's go to tinkercad to program these motors so i'm on tinkercad.com and i'm going to start a new project and i'm going to drag in the arduino and two geared dc motors and i'm going to connect these two dc motors to pins 6 7 8 and 9 as we have done on the physical board i'm not connecting the ground with the ground i'm simply connecting it to a pin so that we can control it via code we don't need to have a motor driver board on tinkercad because all that the motor board motor driver board is doing is making sure that we have adequate current given to the motors so here all we have to ensure is that the pins are connected in in the correct manner uh, so that our when we write the code there is no problem in our coding so the code is straight forward to move the motors forward we need to have a one pin high one pin low and the same on the other side and to move it in reverse we have to flip the polarity so if you imagine that if you were just running this dc motor directly all you had to do was connect it to a power supply and here these pins are serving as power supply so one of these pins will become uh, high the other one will become low and hence it will be like completing the circuit so that's what uh, i'm just going to write here i'm going to say set pin number 6 to high so if pin 6 on this motor is high pin 7 to which the other terminal of the motor is connected must be low to run this motor so i'm going to say set pin 7 to low and then i'm going to duplicate this and then we have pin 8 and 9 so if i make 8 positive so i'm saying if pin 8 is high then pin 9 has to be low for this motor to function so i'm going to say set pin 9 to low and if i run this simulation 
you can see that both my motors are moving in the same direction and then if i want to reverse the motors then all i have to do is duplicate all of this and just flip the polarity so if i make this low this high and what was high earlier i'm making it low and what was low earlier i'm making it high so this means that the motors will now run in the reverse direction and i'm going to go into control and i'm going to put a wait command so our code essentially says that drive both the motors forward for 1 second and then drive them in reverse for 1 second and keep repeating the loop let's copy this code to our arduino so let me validate this code and then since there are no errors i'm going to transfer it to my arduino so as you can see the wheels are turning clockwise and then anti clockwise so that is how we can take our robotic car forward in reverse simply by flipping the polarity and if we want to take a left turn or a right turn all we have to do is put one motor low and the other motor high which means one motor is not operational and the other is running so what will happen is one of the wheels will turn while the other is still and with that the motor will our car will turn and likewise if you want to turn it on the other side we don't supply any voltage to the right motor we supply it to the left motor and hence our uh, car will turn in the in in the other direction so simply by changing this code we can make our car go left or right now as you saw that the car was the motor was rotating at a very high speed and if you don't want that to happen you want to slow down the speed of the motor you can do that and and the way to do it is that if we attach it to a digital pin if we attach the motors to di regular digital pins there is not much we can do we have to add you know maybe a potentiometer or something like that but instead of that if we attach the these uh, motors to the pwm pins pin number 3 5 6 9 10 11 then using pwm we can control the speed of the motors and if you don't understand pwm or pulse width modulation then i have another video in which i have explained this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the connection of my motor to go into the pwm pins so i'm going to connect them to pin number 3 5 6 and 9 now that uh, the motors are attached to pwm pins instead of sending them a digital signal which can only be low or high i can go to output and i can bring out this other command which is the analog write command analog write command means the digital pin can only be high or low but the pwm pins can take any value between 0 and 255 where 0 is equal to 0 volt or low 255 is equal to 5 volts or high and any value in between is proportionate so a value of 127 will be half because it is half of it is midway between 0 and 255 and hence the voltage will be around 2 and a half volts so by controlling the voltage that we are supplying we can control the speed so i'm going to put this at uh, let's say maybe 100 to slow down my motor and then i'm going to duplicate this pin 5 is 0 then i'm going to duplicate this and then i'm going to say for the second motor pin number 6 is high and pin number 9 is low which is my second motor so i have changed this digital to analog output and i can control the voltage by using the pwm pins and then i'm going to put a wait of 1 second then i'm going to duplicate this entire block and i'm now going to flip the polarity so that my motors go in reverse and at a slower speed so i'm going to say make this 0 make this 100 make this 0 and make this 100 and then i don't really need to change the pins here because i'm not running the simulation i'm going to straight away transfer this code to my arduino so i'm going to copy the code 
go to my Arduino, uh, my Arduino IDE and paste this code. So now I have got analog write, pin number 3 to 100, pin 5 to 0 and so forth. I'm going to validate my program. It's all correct. So I'm going to transfer it to my Arduino. So as you can see the code is working fine and the car is going forward and reverse one second each. Now that we understand the fundamentals, let's make this car autonomous. Autonomous means that uh, any machine which is capable of taking decisions on its own and we can make a machine autonomous by adding sensors. So what I'm going to do is in my project, I'm going to get a ultrasonic sensor and I'm getting the ultrasonic sensor with uh, four pins because that is the one I have uh, HCSR04 if you have the ultrasonic sensor which has three pins use the other one so I'm going to connect my ground to ground and 5 volt to 5 volt then I'm going to connect trigger pin to pin number 10 and the echo pin to pin number 11 so with the ultrasonic sensor connected to the Arduino, I'm going to go into code, I'm going to go into input and I'm going to bring in the read ultrasonic sensor command and to use the ultrasonic sensor, I have another detailed video on this, but basically we want to first create a variable, we can call it anything, I'm calling it distance. So what I'm saying is in the beginning of the program, I'm saying set this variable called distance to whatever reading we are going to get from the ultrasonic sensor and we have to tell the program where is this attached. So the trigger pin is attached to pin number 10 and the echo pin, if you are using a three pin ultrasound sensor, then leave it as it is. Otherwise, uh, use the drop down and select whichever pin you have put it on. So I have put the echo pin on 11. So now we know the distance that the ultrasonic sensor is going to measure in centimeters. So what we want to do here is instead of simply driving the car forward and reverse, which, we're doing, which we were doing earlier with this code, now we want our car to be able to take its own decisions. So I'm going to go into control and I'm going to get a if then else conditional statement. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to go into math, get a Boolean operator. And what we want is that if when our car is moving forward and the ultra and there is some obstacle in front and the ultrasonic sensor detects that obstacle and let's say if the obstacle is less than five centimeters away, that means the car is pretty close to the object. We want the car to maybe we want it to reverse. So I can take these set of blocks and this is the reverse. So I'm going to say reverse for one second. And if the distance is more than five centimeters, that means there is no obstacle which is too close to the car. Then I want the vehicle to simply keep moving forward and I can remove this weight because what we want is that if there is nothing in front of the car, then the car should simply keep moving forward at a speed that we have defined, which is right now uh, we are saying it's 100 equivalent of whatever voltage is supplied when the PWM pin is at 100. So what we can do here is also that if there is an object in front of the car, then it will reverse for one second, but then it will again go forward, uh, right? Because we have not said anything else. So what we want is when the car is reversing, it should reverse a little and then maybe turn left or right. So I'm going to make it turn. So I'm going to uh, duplicate these commands to, so if I, say that one of the motors does not move and it's for us to decide which one we don't want to move. So I'm right now saying motor two, which is connected on six and nine, I'm making both of them low, which means only motor one will move forward and motor two will not move at all. And hence the car will turn. So it will reverse a little and then it will turn. And I'm going to again put a weight here of one second. And I'm going to attach it here. So just to explain the program again, we have ultrasonic sensor, which is attached to a particular trigger and echo pin. 
and we are storing the value that this ultrasonic sensor distance that it calculates to a variable called distance. And then we are saying if the distance between the ultrasonic sensor and the obstacle is less than 5 centimeters, we want the car to reverse for one second. We also want it to turn to one direction. Whether this is left or right, we will find out once we are driving the car. And if you are not happy, you can always exchange. You can make this 0 and make this 100 and then you will turn the other side. And, and if the distance is more than 5 centimeters, which means there is no obstacle, then we are giving a command to always keep moving forward. So let's look at this. Let's copy this code. Let's validate this. There are no errors. So I'm going to transfer this program to the Arduino. Now we need to attach a ultrasonic sensor. So I have put all the pins together. So we have the ultrasonic sensor now connected to the Arduino. So finally, we can test this car. To make this autonomous vehicle even more effective, you can add more ultrasound sensors, say one to the left and one to the right, and then it will become even better at avoiding obstacles. I hope you enjoyed this video and you will try making a simple autonomous vehicle using ultrasound sensor.